in 1910, Japan took over Korea as its colony and began a long period of misrule and oppression. Then on September 9, 1945, at the capital city of Seoul, a group gathered for the signing of the Japanese surrender in Korea. The Japanese governor and his military representatives were brought in. After a short address by the commander of the American Occupation Forces, Lieutenant General John R. Hodge, the surrender instruments were formally signed. Bringing an end to 35 years of Japanese domination of the country. The Korean people were wildly enthusiastic. For years, they had fought against their Japanese oppressors. A symbol of freedom flying on their soil was inspiring. However, the development toward a free, united Korea has been hindered by an artificial boundary at the 38th parallel. The establishment of this parallel was a purely military decision reached in consultation between American and Soviet military leaders at the time when it was necessary to decide who was to accept the surrender of the Japanese in different parts of Korea. The boundary separated Russian and American troops and was supposedly only temporary. Disarmament in South Korea took place systematically under supervision of the American 6th, 7th and 40th divisions. The surrendering forces were thoroughly searched before being sent to Japan. By early 1946, the United States had sent almost three quarters of a million Japanese soldiers, government workers and civilians to their homeland. While the Japanese military was being disarmed and deported, Koreans were being returned to their native land from overseas. During the war, two million Koreans had been taken to Japan and forced to aid the military program. As rapidly as possible, ships brought them home to begin their lives once more. Korean men had been drafted into the Japanese army while their families had been used as slave labor. American military intelligence made thorough investigations of leaders of the Japanese army in Korea. Japanese forces were not merely stationed in this country, they completely dominated the lives of Koreans. The police power in Korea was Japanese. The rulers of government were Japanese. Our major objective today in Korea is the establishment of a sound government. Since the United States and Russia in joint commission have thus far been unable to reach agreement on the uniting of the northern and southern zones, the United States has made clear an intention to carry out its pledges to Korea in the southern zone. Until a stable government can be set up, the United States is seeing through a program of training in self-government similar to that formerly administered in the Philippine Islands. Although there is a strong desire for independence, there is a lack of trained personnel for government jobs. In the past, most administrative positions had been held by the Japanese, Patriotic Koreans were never permitted to occupy any important post. The average Korean is a rugged individualist. He likes to think and speak for himself. Today, in the southern zone, all people have the right to assemble peaceably and express their viewpoints. The people of South Korea trade and move about freely within their zone. But unfortunately, the 38th parallel 
originally a military expedient, has become a barrier preventing normal activities within the entire country. For a while, there was little communication between the two zones. After several months, mail was exchanged for the first time. Although mail does cross the boundary, there are fewer exchanges of services between North and South Korea than between many nations. The country is split economically as well as politically. In this first exchange, 1,601 bags of mail were sent to North Korea from the southern zone. Four bags were received from the northern zone. At the 38th parallel, American border troops are receiving large numbers of refugees that have fled from the northern zone, where a government has been set up along Soviet lines. Refugees arriving in American territory are hungry and weak after long journeys on foot. The area to which they have fled is mainly agricultural. The northern zone is industrial and lacking in rice and other food products grown on South Korean soil. Nevertheless, the southern zone is far from being self-sufficient. It has depended in the past upon the north for hydroelectric power, coal, and fertilizer. At present, the United States is supplying most of its fertilizer. In spite of increases in farm products, there are extreme shortages of food in both northern and southern zones. Because Korean rice is planted by hand, the land produces more rice per acre than American rice fields. Despite primitive methods, Korea is one of the leading rice growing countries. This is the first time in 40 years that Koreans have had complete control over their own crops. Formerly, Japan took large amounts of Korean rice for its own use while rationing very small quantities to the Koreans. Now, this staple of the Oriental diet is kept within the country for home consumption. food program, the United States is shipping seeds, grain, and other foods to Korea. Besides food, vast amounts of medical supplies and other urgent necessities for life and health have been provided by the United States government. Although it is of major importance to plan a long-range program to allow this country to stand on its own feet, Korea needs immediate aid in the form of direct relief. Food is a necessary step in encouraging the people to plan for democracy.